I was born in 1924, and I was born, and my name was Edna May Bryce. And I started off the war. I was only 15 years of age. So I was still a young girl when the war started. And I never really thought a lot about it. But I was still living at home. I worked in an accountant's office. And the only way the war affected us was we got air raid warnings at, warnings at night. We'd have to go out to our shelter, which was in the garden. And of course the air raid warden, warnings started every night, so we decided to sleep in the garden. And it was all right in the winter, because um, we could go out. But in the summer, it was very, very hot out there, because we had double summertime then. So it was light until quite late at night. And even now, I hate going to bed when it's still light. And of course then we woke up and it was dark in the morning. But the war went on and in 1942, the government decided that all women would have to be called up. And so in 1942, I was 17 and I had to think what I was going to do. I could join the Air Force the army or go munitions. And then I saw an advertisement for people to join the WRNS, which stood for the Women's Royal Naval Service. And it was Wrens for short. Then I liked the uniform. Um, there's a photo over there of a Wren in uniform. And uh, so I filled in an application form and I was accepted and on my 18th birthday I had to travel to London to a place called Mill Hill, which was at the top of um, Mill Hill. And it was, uh, I realised I was at the right place because it was guarded by a sailor. And I went in. There were about eight girls with me. And uh, first of all, we had to have a medical examination. Then we had to pass a, a sort of test to see if we could add up and read and write. And, uh, and then we were all put in one room and told to go, we could sleep there. Well, the thing I hated then was having to undress in front of other people. But then we slept all night. The next day we went back to the schoolroom and uh, we were told which category we would be in. We had all been accepted, and I was going to be a Wren writer. Now, a writer in the Navy is somebody who works in an office. And we were then issued with our uniform, which was a, black, a navy blue skirt, a navy blue jacket, a white shirt, a, a, a tie. And then for our underclothes, we had uh, navy blue bloomers, which were huge. And we had to wear them at all times. And they came down right to the top of our knees. And, and then we had navy blue woolen stockings. And we were inspected and we were all right. And then after a while, we were told where we were going to go. And I was posted. Um, to a naval barracks in Chatham, which was, again, really in the front line, because it was right next door to Chatham Dockyard, where all the ships would come in to revittle and uh, change the staff, and we worked in the barracks. And we took over the jobs from the men. and. Uh, as I was a writer, I had to look after the books of certain men. And I, I, I have looked after the books of the men, say A to J. And if they had any queries, when the sailors came in, they would come to my desk and ask what had happened to their money and why were they getting it off. They, um, they got threepence extra every day 
if they didn't take the grog. Now the grog was the rum that was issued to a sailor every day at midday. But if they didn't take it, they got threepence a day extra. And in those days, I mean nowadays, it's worth nothing, but to then it was quite a lot of money. And uh, especially for the stokers, the stokers didn't earn as much as the other sailors. And I always thought that was unfair because they did the main work. And because they worked right in the bowels of the ship. And in those days, the ships were coal fired and, and uh, they really worked very hard. And if they were torpedo, they had no chance of escaping. And when you worked on the ledgers, you had a, a, a sort of one ledger that was the main ledger, and then you had another ledger that was the copy ledger. So every, at the end of every day, you had to make sure that they both agreed. And if they didn't both agree, you had to go over all the figures again at the end of the day. And, uh, and with the wrens, we lived in barracks. We slept in a room with four other girls, and obviously we became quite good friends. And we used to go out in the evenings together. We could go to dances, or we could do what we liked, as long as we were in bed, in at home, and in bed by just after ten o'clock. And if we weren't, if we were late, well, that was it. We weren't allowed out for another week. So one of the main things we used to go to was dances, and uh, one Sunday. I, my friend and I noticed there was a dance on in this church hall and my parents being very strict would never let me go to a dance on a Sunday but I went and we went in and there were only two other people in there, two soldiers and little did I know That was my future husband. I'm sorry. Because he died recently. So it up, still upsets me. So I'm sorry about that. And uh, then at the end of the war, we were married. I was pregnant and he was still in the army. And, uh, and the war wasn't over in Japan, so he had to go out to the Far East. And by the time he came back, we had a little boy. And this little boy couldn't stand the sight of his father because he wasn't used to a man being in the house. Um, but jumping along after 65 years, well, that little boy is 65 now. And, and I live in St Dunstan's. And I think for me it's the best thing because he is now travelling all over the world. And so he had, doesn't have to worry about me when he goes away. And I think I'm a very, very lucky person to live in St Dunstan's.